Or did they have a plan or something? Yeah. No, they're they're yelling at each other. <laughs> oh god. My name's Joels. I'm a Radiant player, and today we coach the Gold Rays player who struggle with utility usage. If you're enjoying this type of content, be sure to like and subscribe, considering 80% of you guys are still not subscribed. I do these coaching sessions live, so you're more than welcome to swing by the stream and ask questions. If you're interested in coaching yourself, click the link in the description, click the book a lesson button, and select your plan in time. Lastly, if you want a chance to win free coaching, be sure to comment down below your Discord name and why you think you deserve it. I'll be picking out a person randomly. Other than that, enjoy the video. What would you say is like your biggest weaknesses? Um, probably just the inconsistencies. Not, yeah, not communicating with my team sometimes. I'll like go in and then not say I'm going in, so my team is way behind me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's usually a big thing. It's a, it's a lot harder in lower elos because they really do need that sort of indicator, right? Like to, to yeah. be told to go in. Otherwise, they just won't even follow you in and trade you. And the whole point of like a duelist isn't necessarily to just like run into sight, get like five kills, right? That, that's not your whole goal. The whole goal for you is basically just to create space for your team, right? Like you go out, maybe you get one kill and then you get traded, but then your teammate trades that second one. That's your job done, right? Like... Yeah. Even if you go in and you just blast pack in and you die right away, but your team is able to follow up and trade off of that, you've done your job. So um, it's a little bit more than just going in and getting kills. It's also making sure your team's behind you, getting those trade kills, um, okay. and you guys are just kind of going as a team. Yeah. I usually just buy all abilities around one, but I don't know if that's like Gun a good here. or bad thing. Uh, I feel like you don't really need the satchels. I think you can get away with just armor. So I would go like armor Roomba, yeah. Okay. Or ghost, whatever. But whatever, whatever you do, you just got to make sure that you get the Roomba. Roomba is super strong in attack, right? Yeah. Especially right, right there. Yeah, yeah. You have the lineups. Yeah, you're good. You're chilling. God map for Raze. Yeah, it's really good. This is one of Raze's best maps. This and Split are really strong for Raze. Okay. Spike down B. Could technically be backside already. Yeah. So it wasn't. It was. It wasn't bad. I like the trade that you got on the brim. The only thing I probably would have done differently there. The second you plant the bomb, dip right. Like you just want to yeah. get out and start playing the bomb. You were kind of stuck there in sight. I probably would have just like tried to just back up, gun out, looking at the wall, making sure you don't get swung while you're running. Um, and then just go back long, go back, uh, double up, like elbow, whatever. Basically just getting off of sight, right? As long as you guys are all on the same kind of page, yeah. Could, could be close, yeah. I'm pretty sure Sage is close, yeah. I don't know if that cleared it. No, I would not trust your room. <laughs> Yeah, good job. Realistically here, as a good rule of thumb, if like four people can buy rifles, light shields, you're you're buying that rounds, but I mean, it's fine. You just you wanna be on the same page as your team. A shot. Hey, you got one and you got your kill traded or death traded, so this is really good. Good. Yeah, what I like doing on save rounds like these, um, I like playing like a rat, especially like in these lower ranks where you don't have to stay grouped with your team. You can even lurk, you can go showers, do whatever you want to try and maybe like catch a weird timing on the enemy. Um, oh. Oh. Hold tab. Let's see. Is Sage, is Sage close to her ults? No, it doesn't look like that. Oh. Okay, that's that's unfortunate, right? Your team's just not really doing anything. They're not following up. They're like they're just chilling. Yeah, these guys are kind of just swapping. They're going A B A B. Um, so try going B this round. Or do they have a plan or something? Yeah. No, they're they're yelling at each other. <laughs> oh God. Okay, try and ult in here, maybe. Yeah. All right, good shit. You can throw your nade. Jesus Christ. It's all good, it's all good. Huge. Nice, you have your nade again. Nice job. Okay. You have really good aim. This is what I wanted to do when you when I was saying like we should ult in, right? Like but yeah. this time you you guys actually had, you know, a team to follow you up. Um, which is great. 
Okay. Okay. Huge. You have a nade. Oh. Oh. I didn't think she'd swing me. I didn't think she would either, if I'm being honest. Yeah, the only thing I would have probably done differently, like, the second you jump into sight and you get that kill on the brim, just make sure you're always just thinking of, like, the utility that you have up, right? Especially your nade. Yeah. Your nade is really, really strong, and it's really good for, like, stalling any sort of counter trades or anything like that. So, if you were worried that there might be a CT guy, instead of killing the brim and then holding for the CT guy, I probably would have just killed the brim, pulled out the nade, and thrown it at CT. Then that just gives you enough time... Um, or spawn, I mean, uh, enough time for your teammates to just get in a site, plant the bomb, and then kind of get out reposition, right? Like, the, 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 just the slight, like, hesitation on the nade pullout was enough time for your, the Sage to kind of go in and, and look to trade, but it was still a really good round. I really like the space you created there. Oh. Okay. Oh, she got two there. Yeah, I mean, that's just unfortunate. But with, with how this is game is kind of going, when you have, like, teammates that are doing these kind of things, they're not really, you know, taking advantage of the space that you're creating. I would just start looking to lurk, right? Like, just, if you see your team grouping up towards B, just go towards A, right? And then um, try and see if you can work them out that way. I just, I, I didn't really want to, I don't know if this is, like, wasting util, but I didn't want to, like, use util, and then if they needed help on A, then I don't have util to help them. That makes sense. Uh, the thing is, too, though, with Util, Util should always be used to create space, right? So it's like, if you're just chucking it to chuck it, then it's not really, like, that good. But if you have intentions with it, then it's never really bad. Like, there, if you wanted to get hookah control, using Util to get hookah control isn't the worst idea ever. And then after you get hookah control, it's fine if you fall back and go back towards A without any Util, but at least you were able to secure hookah control, and that puts pressure on the enemy. Can aid back site, yeah. I know, I, I shot the corner, right? Uh, I think it was a little bit to the left, but yeah. yeah. I think if it was just a, a little bit more to the right, that would have been it, but that was fine. That was good, that was good. I like the idea there. Basically, like, by process of elimination, you knew that he was in the corner, right? You threw the nade yeah. back site. So he can't be behind that wall, like directly behind that wall. And you checked all the left side. So the only spot left was he ran back towards spawn or he's in the cubby. So I, I like the ults and it created a lot of space for your team. I would look to rotate and fall back to A, I think. There's no way that they... Oh, actually, never mind. Okay. All right. Last player standing. Oh my god, I suck. It's all good, it's all good, it's all good. The main thing that I noticed, um, you have good aim. Uh, movement, movement's not bad. The only thing that I'm noticing is you make sure that you're using your utility to create space as well. Like, you're really good at creating space with your double satchels and going into sight, which is great. Um, but you also want to make sure that you are, you know, have intentions with your util, right? Like... If you Roomba something, make sure you, you follow up that Roomba that it, that, that space just has, has just been created, right? You know, sometimes you're you're taking aggressive duels or fights or things you shouldn't you don't need to take when you have your ult. It's it's almost like you want to play like your ult is up, you're playing safe. You're just chilling, you're avoiding gunfights, you're getting close as you possibly can to a site. Double satchel in, pop your ult, go ham, right? And then that's when you yeah. just take as many fights as you want. Um, yeah. you, what you want to do is like after you're up numbers, you just got two picks. Let's say you have sight, you plant to the bomb. You are in an ideal spot. It's almost like that round is really hard to lose if everybody plays smart, like playing off of your team, um, trading kills, falling off. But if you're just kind of chilling in sight, one v ones, or you're looking for more, they get a pick. Now it's a three v four. Maybe the the sage got the kill, and now sage has res. Now they res their teammate. Now it's a four v four. You know, if, if there's a lot of like windows, I, I call them to come back into the game if you play too, too aggressive sometimes. But for the most part, I, th I thought you played pretty good. If you remember when you were in U-Haul where you were holding the the cat put or the short push, right? Yeah. Uh, so why I wanted you to tuck in there was because that angle that you're holding is a very common angle where when they come around that corner, the first thing they're looking at is that little opening of the door at 
U-Haul, right? And you just happen to be in front of that opening. So they're looking right at you. Basically, when you're holding angles or playing angles, you want to avoid playing ones that they're going to be looking exactly where you're playing. And by tucking into the corner, it opens the door to like, you know, now it's not so clear where they need to be clearing. They have to be clearing bench. They have to be clearing back site. They have to also be clearing where you're at. So it's more of a gamble and it's a higher chance that you can get a free kill. Also, you pulled out the Roomba too, right? When you're in that pocket, you don't want to be basically like you, you want to make sure that they don't know where you're at. And by pulling out the Roomba, it kind of just gives away. Hey, guys, I'm here. Just like a good rule of thumb. If they don't know where you're at, don't let them know where you're at by throwing a util. Sometimes it's better to not use your util if they don't know where you're at and, have, and you have a really good timing. Uh, and that's a very, very common mistake a lot of like gold plat players make is like, let's say I'm in a 1v2 clutch. I'm playing Reyna. This happens so many times. I, I hear it all the time over the mic. They're like, you have two flashes. You have two flashes. But they don't know where I'm at. It's so much better for me to use that advantage that they don't know where I'm at than it is to just throw my flash out for a potential blind and just be like, hey, everybody, look, like, I'm in this corner, right? Like, it's yeah. it's so much better to use that lack of information from the enemy team than it is to just use, like, your util. Because sometimes your util just doesn't even bring you that much value, right? So, yeah, just actively thinking, I mean, whenever you're in a comp game, and you don't have to, like, super, super sweat it uh, every single game, but... As long as you're doing it some rounds, the important rounds, and of course, still having fun with it. It's like studying, right? When you're studying a new subject, you are going to be dumping in hours, right? Like you're gonna be putting in so many hours to try and learn it. But when you've already learned it, that's when you can just be like, I'll just do it one hour a day, right? Just to maintain yeah. that knowledge that I have because you've already learned it. So, and when you wanna learn something new, again, you have to do that, put in that work, right? It's like working out yeah. basically your, <laughs> your Valorant skills, so. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you have any any questions at all? Uh, no. I th you covered basically every everything with that. Well, all right. Good luck with your games and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. No problem. No problem. All right. Have a nice stream. Thanks. See you.